This video is over lesson 77, percent of a number, part 2, and it's for my 7th grade math class. We learned in lesson 74 that math is a language, and thus we often have to translate words into math in order to understand how to solve problems. In lesson 60, we also learned the following formula. So a percent, a percent, which I'm going to use the letter C, C percent, as that of means time, so put a times dot there. I know the green is a little hard to see there. Put a times dot there in the green. A whole, we use a capital W since it's the whole thing, we use a capital W. Is, remember is means equals, and then a part of the whole, well, since it's just a part, we'll use a lowercase p for part. So you'll notice that uh, this is very similar to a lesson we just did recently on a uh, fraction of a number, part two. And so this is basically the same concept. Uh, the only difference is we're going to convert our answers into percentages. So in this lesson, we'll learn how to find the percent or the whole when the rest of the information is known. Uh, so let's dive in and take a look at some examples. So again, we're going to translate this. So what percent? I don't know. So anything I don't know, I'm going to use with a variable. We could use the letter C like we did up here, or I'm just going to go traditional, and anything I don't know, I'm going to make X in this lesson. So what percent? I don't know. X. Of means times. 64 is 64. Is means equals. And then 48 is, well, 48. So now, in order to get rid of a times 64, just like we did last time, we divide by 64 on both sides. So the 64 here and the 64 there will cancel. So the one I was multiplying by and the one I was dividing by will cancel. And then over here, I'm going to end up with 48 over 64. So 48 over 64, I know that 8 goes into both of those. 8 goes into there 6 times, and 8 goes into that 8 times. And then I'm going to actually let you kind of come out here. Um, now that we pretty much got it solved, it's just a matter of reducing. We can put in some extra equal signs. So don't put extra equal signs in here. We want to leave that equation alone. But since we're down to our answer, we can go ahead. So here I'm going to have uh, 2 goes into both of those. So 3 fourths. And now remember, ladies and gentlemen, in order to change something into a percent, okay, if we have a fraction and we times it by 100% over 1, the answer will be a percent. So if I take this and multiply it by 100% over 1, and then I can reduce the 4 with the 100, that'll make a 1 and a 25. So all 1's on bottom means it's going to be a whole number. So 3 times 25% is 75%. So what percent is 64 of 4... Of, excuse me, what percent of 64 is 48? 75 percent of 64 is 48. Next example, if you remember this from the, the previous lesson, uh, it's actually the same numbers. So this one's a little tricky because it says what percent, I don't know, is equals, which means that this is my percentage. So percentages, though, are going to start with a fraction. So this of here is deceptive. Normally it means times, but this is one of the few times it actually means out of. So it's actually going to make a fraction where they're going to go right in order. So 64 out of 48 means 64 over 48. Now, in order to read that a little better, I'm going to make it double big. Let's make that double big. So x equals 64 over 48. Now there's my fraction, so let's just go ahead and multiply it by 100% over 1. Now we can do all kinds of reducing before multiplying. So I might actually start with these two. Remember it just has to be a numerator with a denominator. They don't have to be across from each other. I know a lot of you have learned the term cross division, which is a, is a real thing, 
but this is the reason why I call it reducing before multiplying, because as long as it's multiplication, it can be any numerator with any denominator. So 8 goes into 64 8 times, 8 goes into 48 6 times, and then, well, I'm going to keep going with that. I can reduce those both by 2 and get a 4 and a 3, and then, well, 3 and 4 don't reduce, and 3 and 100 doesn't reduce, and 1 is as reduced as it can get. So no more reducing, it's time to multiply. I do not have one, all 1's in the denominator, which means I will still have a fraction. 3 times 1 is 3. Up top, 4 times 100% is 400%. Fractions mean division, so if we divide here, we can actually do a little bit of short division. So 3 goes into 4 once with 1 left over. 3 then goes into 10 three times, 3 times 3 is 9, so there'll be 1 left over. 3 goes into 10 three times, 3 times 3 is 9, so there'll be 1 left over. Now I don't have anything else to carry that over to, so now we're going to make a fraction for the left over. Percent sign is still there, so this actually is 133 and one third percent. So 64 out of 48 is 133 and one third percent. Next up, 90% of what number is 108? So 90% is 90%. Of means times. What number, we don't know, is equals, and then 108 is 108. Now here we have to make a decision. 90% we either need to change that to a fraction or we need to change that to a decimal. So it doesn't really matter a ton, but we do have to make that decision. So in this case, 90% um, sounds like it might be kind of an easy decimal to make. So I'm, I'm actually going to choose to make it a decimal. So I'm going to come over here, just kind of out of the way, and do a little bit of scratch work. So we know that percent literally means divide by 100. So 90% literally means 90 divided by 100. So 100 would tell me to move the decimal two times, so once, twice. And so this would be 0 0.9. So instead of 90%, now I have 0 0.9x, or times x, equals 108. Now remember to cancel out something that we're multiplying by. We will divide both sides by that number. So the 0 0.9 I'm multiplying with x will be canceled by the 0 0.9 I'm now dividing by. That's why it's just x left over. Now i got to figure out what that is. So if I come over here, do a little bit of scratch work again, i got 108, and I'm dividing it by 0 0.9. So when we divide by a decimal, remember that we move the decimal over to make that a whole number, but that's balanced out by doing the same thing in here. 0 is the placeholder. Move your decimal up. So 9 does not go into 1, but 9 goes into 10 once. 1 times 9 would be 9. 10 minus 9 would be 1. A little short division here. And then 9 goes into 18 two times evenly. So we're done dividing, but we have one space here we got to fill, and we fill it with a 0. So x equals 120. So 90% of 120 is 108. Flip over to the back. 18 is what percent of 42? So again, 18 is just 18. Is means equals. What percent, I don't know, of is times, and 42 is itself, 42. So to get rid of the 42 that we're multiplying with x, we're going to have to divide both sides by 42. Now if you'd like, another way that we can do these is I can just go ahead and make this double big now and copy that 18 over 42 down and then multiply it with my 100% over 1 just like I did before. And now I can do my reducing. So I know that 6 goes into both of these. 6 goes into 18 three times. 
6 goes into 42 seven times. Now 3 and 7 don't reduce anymore, and 7 and 100 don't reduce anymore, and 100 doesn't reduce at all, or excuse me, 1 doesn't reduce at all. So therefore, we're ready to multiply. 7 times 1 means I do have a denominator of 7. 3 times 100% will be 300%. So a little short division would make this nice and easy. 7 does not go into 3, but 7 does go into 30 four times. 4 times 7 would be 28. So out of 30 would leave 2 behind. 7 then goes into 20 two times. 2 times 7 would be 14. If we take that away from 20, that's going to be 6 left over. And of course, the percent sign tags along. So this is 42 and 6 sevenths percent. So 18 is 42 and 6 sevenths percent of 42. So it's kind of a coincidence there that we've got a 42 and a 42. Letter E. 45 is what percent of 180? So 45 is just 45. Is is equals what percent? I don't know. Of times 180, 180. Now I'm going to simplify this. I want to get rid of the 180 that I'm multiplying by here. Oops, sorry, I forgot to cancel those up there. So to get rid of that, I'm going to have to divide both sides by 180. So the one that I'm multiplying by will be canceled with the one I'm dividing by. And so if we do it like we did up top there, oops, just lost my pencil head. X, therefore, is going to equal 45 over 180, but we have to turn it into a percent. So multiply it by 100% over 1. So this time, uh, I might reduce these both by 10. So that'll leave me with a 10. This will become an 18. And then 9 goes into both of those. 9 goes into 45 five times. 9 goes into 18 twice. And well, 2 and 10 can reduce. So 2 and 10 reduces. Um, that'll become a 5. And that'll be a 1. Well, I've got all 1s on the bottom now, so that means my answer is a whole number. So 5 times 5 is 25, and the percent sign tags along. So that came out nice and neat, 25%. So 45 is 25% of 180. So just to take a pause and, and explain kind of what that means, is 25% is saying that if we were to cut up 180 into 100 equal pieces. Okay, so imagine having 100 boxes. And you took 180 and cut it up into 100 equal pieces and put those pieces into each of your 100 boxes. If we were to grab 25 of those boxes, pour their contents out and put them back together, that would be the number 45. All right, F. 15 is 20% of what number? So translate, 15 is 15. Is means equals, and 20% is 20%. Of means times, and what number? Well, I don't know. So this is similar to the one that we did on the front, if you remember, letter C. So we've got to decide, are we going to change this into a, a fraction or a decimal? So we went decimal last time. This time, let's go with a fraction, just to mix it up. So 20% literally means 20 divided by 100, which then as a fraction would be 20 over 100. And then if we reduce this, 20 goes into both of those, goes into the top once, goes into the bottom five times. So then over here, we have 15 equals 1 fifth x. You could put the times dot in if you wanted to, but it's not necessary because the number right next to x, as long as the number is first, we don't need the dot. Now, ladies and gentlemen, remember that when we have a fraction, we cannot divide both sides by the fraction. We don't divide by fractions. Instead, we multiply by the reciprocals. So the reciprocal of 1 fifth actually would be 5 over 1, which is really just 5. So I'm going to copy this down. 
and then I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. Now you could write that as 5 over 1 if you really wanted to, but the 1 fifth and the 5, because they're reciprocals, are going to cancel each other out here. That means that you're just going to have x left over. On the other side, it's just 5 times 15. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you should already know 4 times 15 because of the clock. 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour, so if you put four quarters together, well, that'd be the whole hour. Well, the whole hour is 60 minutes. So then 5 times 15 is just one group of 15 more. So 60 plus one more group of 15 is 75. So 15 is 20% of 75. And our last example here, 60 is itself, is is equals 75% of times, and then what number? Well, I don't know, so x. Again here, we have to decide with our percent, do we want to make that percent which means divide by 100. Do we want to make this a decimal or do we want to make it a fraction? Well, if you think ahead a little bit, if we make this a decimal, we'd scoot that decimal over two times and we have 0 0.75. Well, since it's connected by multiplication, we're going to end up having to divide by that. That doesn't sound super nice. We could do it, but it doesn't sound super nice. So let's go with the fraction. And some of you may already have this memorized. However, I want you to practice the work uh, just because there are going to be fractions that come along that are not going to be things that you have memorized. So practice the work on the easy stuff so that you know you know how to do it for the hard stuff. And of course, 25 goes into both of those and gives us 3 fourths, like many of you, I'm sure, already knew. So then this is really 60 equals 3 fourths x. And just like we did on the problem up above, we are going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. We do not divide by fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to copy it and then multiply. So the reciprocal of 3 fourths would be 4 thirds. So that the 3 fourths and the 4 thirds cancel each other out, which is why it's just x now. If you remember our shortcut from the other day, when you have a whole number times a fraction, you will take your whole number and multiply by the numerator, divide by the denominator, but it doesn't matter what order you do it in as long as you do it all. So I'm going to take 60 and divide it by 3 first. So 60 divided by 3 would be 20, and then times the 4 is 80. So 60 is 75% of 80. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of our lesson.